A while ago, I got a message from Daniel Webster asking me if I could do a video on using Logic Pro for recording with the Tone Master Pro. I recently did a video on reamping using Logic Pro, but that's not the same as just doing basic tracking. So let's do this. How to use your Tone Master Pro with Logic Pro. I'm going to assume that you have connected your Tone Master Pro to your Mac using the included USB-C cable and that you're using at least a fairly recent version of the operating system. I'm on Sonoma version 14.5. I'm also using the most recent version of Logic, which is 11.0.1. .1. So let's open Logic Pro. Another assumption I'm going to make is that your backing tracks are ready to go. Either you've imported some backing tracks or you recorded some using Logic's built-in drummer and maybe some of Logic's virtual instruments, like bass and organ. Now, I've already created my own backing tracks, so I'm not going to include that process here. Let me know if you'd like to see a video that shows me putting down all the tracks and I'll add it to the schedule. So what I did was I put down drums, bass, and keyboards. I'll play a few bars so you can hear what we're working with. Okay, let's add a rhythm guitar track and a lead guitar track. Now the first thing you need to do is make sure that Logic Pro is using the Tone Master Pro as the input source for your guitar tracks. Click on Logic Pro up here in the top menu, go down to Settings, and then over to Audio, and click on it. Your output device is your audio interface, if you have one. I have a PreSonus Studio 1810C connected to a pair of focal monitors. Your input device needs to be the Tone Master Pro. Click on the drop-down menu and select it. If you don't see it on the list, make sure that the Tone Master Pro is turned on and connected to your Mac with the USB cable. Set the I.O. buffer size as low as your system will allow. I have mine set at the lowest setting, 32 samples. Okay, now close this window. Now, to get a new track, we click on the plus sign. The Create New Track window pops up. Click on the option on the far right, Audio, and make sure that mic or line is highlighted. Now click on the blue Create. A new track called Audio 1 is created. Let's double click on the track name and rename it Rhythm Guitar. The orange eye is highlighted, which means that input monitoring is turned on. This allows you to hear your guitar when you play it. Now let's see here. So we're not hearing anything, and you have your guitar's volume turned up. Try clicking over here on the left where it says USB 1, 2. Go down to Input, and just click on Input 1, 2 again. And now we have Signal. Now let's switch over to the Pro Control app and make sure that we're sending a good strong signal to Logic Pro. Let's take a look at my preset. I'm going to use Nashville Cats for both parts. Now if we go over here and click on Preset Settings, you can see that the preset volume right now is 53%. Normally I'd leave it there, but for recording, I like to bump it up, oh, to around, let's say, 77%. And let's see what that gives us. Now click on the settings icon up here in the upper right, and we're at the user preferences panel. Go down here to mixer. Here's the fader for USB 1.2. Make sure it is turned up all the way to 0.0. .0. You'll be sending a good strong signal to Logic Pro. Now you might have to turn your preset volume down depending on the preset and guitar that you're using. I'm using my Paul Reed Smith Silver Sky, which has single coils. Let's switch back to Logic Pro and record the rhythm guitar parts. What you need to do is click on the red circle up here and you'll get a count in before the recording starts.
Okay, so I recorded that 12 bar riff. There was one small mistake in it, but it isn't enough to basically say, okay, let's keep on doing this until we get it perfect. So what I did was I copied it and then just put it so you can see there's, there's one break right there. Then here's another section where I just copied. Here's another one and here's another one. And then we have one last one right here. So let me just play you the last few seconds of it here. All right, now I'll add some lead guitar. Let's add a new track. Once again, you know, we click on the plus sign up here. Audio, mic align, create. And now we get a new track called Audio 2. Let's double click on the track name and name it Lead Guitar. Okay, now let's go to the Tone Master Pro. I'm turning on the Royal Tone for the lead. All right, let's click on the red circle and record the lead guitar track. So at this point, you've put down your rhythm guitar and lead guitar parts. All your tracks are done, and now it's time to mix it. Well, I can't go into an in-depth discussion on mixing in this video, guys. It would just take way too much time. But what I will say, though, is that since I'm using virtual instruments, I don't really worry much about EQ, so all we're doing is adjusting volume and left-right balance for the most part. I always start out with drums, then I bring in the bass. Then I add keys, rhythm guitar, and finally lead guitar. The keys and the guitars have to basically dance on a solid foundation of drums and bass. If drums and bass aren't happening, then nothing's happening. Then I add any final effects that I think are needed. When I'm happy with the mix, I'll bounce the track. I always bounce to a WAV file. Okay, so here's how my final mix looks. Drums are at zero dB and pan straight up. Bass guitar is at minus 7.8 and pan straight up. Hammond organ is at minus 8.8 and panned plus 30 to the right. Rhythm guitar is minus 2.8 and panned 30 to the left. Lead guitar is at minus 2.5 and panned straight up. And this is what my final mix sounds like.
So that's my demo on recording with Logic Pro using the Tone Master Pro. That's it. It's really easy to use Logic Pro once you have it set up the way that you want to use it. But let me tell you, you can dive deep into Logic Pro. Now I've been using it for the past 15 years and I've done hundreds of demos for dozens of artists with it. I doubt that I know 10% of its capabilities. It really is that deep. Now if you have a Mac and you're not quite ready to invest in Logic Pro, you can always use GarageBand, which comes free with your Mac. It's basically a stripped down version of Logic Pro, but like I said, it's free. Let me know which DAW you use, either Logic Pro or GarageBand. And if you're still here, thank you so much for stopping by and sticking around. I really do appreciate it. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, drop me a line here and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Now next Wednesday, I will have all new content on the Tone Master Pro. You don't want to miss that. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. All right, guys, have a fantastic weekend, and I'll be talking with you again next week.